Good afternoon, FlossTube. This is Michelle at the Striped Rose, and today is Tuesday, January 28th, and I'm going to show you what I've been working on. I haven't been working on a lot because I've been a very monogamous stitcher lately. Um, December and January, I just wanted to get some things done, and I didn't get as much done as I thought I would. But I'll show you what I worked on, I'll show you what I've started, and then I'll show you what I got with my Christmas money. Um, but the first thing I want to show you is an old, old whip that I've been thinking a lot about a lot lately, and that I want to restart, uh, not restart, that I want to start back working on. Um, this is Bridget Power, 1840. It's a very luscious floral basket, and then... Um, an altar. This, let's see, does it, this is, um, this was charted by Female Worth, of Female Worth, of Female Worth. And what got me thinking about this again is um, GGR showed a picture of the original design on her Instagram last year. And I was on Stitching Frog today looking at GGR charts, because that's a good source for GGR charts. And it showed that um, GGR has bought this sampler from whoever it is at a female worth, and she's recharted it. And on Stitch and Frog, you can pre-order the chart. So I want to show you how much I've done. Um, this is probably on Angel Hair or Magnolia. It's 40 count. I'm not thrilled with my stitches. I don't know how long ago this was. This might have been eight years ago, but I'm not picking it all out and I'm not starting over because that's a lot of work um, on a very large sampler. So, And I just used the DMC um, and that's as far as I got. And then for some reason, I put it up. I have no idea why. Not only did I put it up, but I unkitted it um, I have four DMCs in the bag. So that is one, after I finish a few things, I'd really like to get back to that. I'd like to re-kit it back up. The DMC is absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm perfectly happy with that. So if you like that, look for the new chart that you can pre-order um, by, by GGR. So in December, I finished a couple of things. Um, I think I might have showed you this already. Silent Night, and I'm really sorry, I don't have my Christmas magazines with me, so I can't tell you which Just Cross Stitch this was in. I think it's by Threads Through Time. And I, um, the sides, with the, the trees and the snowflakes were not symmetrical on each side, and I tried to make them symmetrical, so that's the only change I made there. Um, the other ornament that I finished was a Plum Street ornament. Good tidings and great joy, and I used, I just used DMC on this, except I used an anchor blue for the house that was just there, and I saw it, and I thought that would work. And instead of the brown door, I made it have a red door, and I like that. The big thing that I worked on um, in December was the LW Motif Sampler. I have no idea why this took me so long to finish, but um, a lot of people were stitching this for Carol Saltbox Stitcher's daughter, Lindsay, um, stitching this and thinking of her and so I'm excited about probably put that in my bedroom I like to think that I'll put pink things pink cross stitches in my bedroom not <clears throat> really downstairs but this could go on the red sampler wall um, it called for mountain mist and Lexington green and mine, I couldn't tell any difference between mine. And so sometimes I would just pull a strand from Lexington Green and then next time pull a strand from Mountain Mist. And it just looks like over dyed floss. It doesn't look, um, it doesn't look 
like two different flosses. So at the new year, I thought, well, I'm going to start something on New Year's Day. And I did. Something that I, I think I told you I was going to start. Something that I've wanted to start for a long time. Plum Street Samplers, Caroline Broomhead. And I collected slowly most of the silks, the called for silks. Um, Nicole at Nicole's Needlework um, finished this last year and she had it framed and you can see that on her blog or her podcast. And on her blog, she actually gives, <coughs> excuse me, her conversion. I think she changed some colors and she gives her conversion on her blog. Um, so far, I'm just using what's called for. So far, because I've only done, well, let's see, how much have I done? And I don't even know which way this goes. But that's malted milk is the light pink. Malted milk. And herb garden is the green and red fox. Um, those are classic color work silk. And I had a lot of um, heartburn over this because I, I didn't like the Ligonier Latte. I didn't like the modeling in it. And so I just went to my old standard of um, light mocha. It's Vigart light mocha. It's beautiful and it never makes me cry. It's always, it's always absolutely perfect. So I started that, but my main thing that I wanted to get done was Isabella Johnston. And I'm still hoping that I can pull it out before the end of the week. I have, I have a few pink things to put in up there. Finish the pink things. Finish this tree. <clears throat> finish the words. And then finish the bottom border and then a few more little things here. And you would think that wouldn't be, it's not a huge sampler. Um, I was bogged down on the leaves for a while. Oh, and I've got to put a few more stitches in the wreath. Um, when I first saw it, I thought, I'm not going to do those blue berries right there because that's just too weird on a red pink and white and green sampler and now I just love it um, the eye is really drawn to that pop of blue there um, I use the DMC conversion for the greens which are not my favorite the greens but that's fine the blues I love um, I used silk for you PRO 34 for the red I used um, a Victoria Motto sampler for the cream color. It was called Bread Dough. It says it's the equivalent of 822. Um, the pink, I think, is Ballet Slipper, but I'm not sure. I don't have it over here with me. Um, but here is the original. And you can find this in Sampler and Antique Needlework Quarterly summer 2010 um, if you if you like more than two samplers in this entire series of magazines if you like or think you might like more than two samplers pay the $50 and get the DVD because some of these I don't know about this one <clears throat> but some of these samplers you can buy them separately now and they can be $20 $25 so um, there is just a $50 for a CD with that entire magazine series is just, is a really good, a really good deal. So I'm really hoping to pull that out and finish that on Friday. And if I don't, <clears throat> the world will probably continue. Um, I realized I didn't have a red work sampler that I was not in compliance with the law or the um, forever and ever uh, stitch along that Michelle, Farm Girl Stitcher and I are doing. Um, and I have been collecting so many red charts and I think right now I have so many that I just can't pick one. 
so I remembered <coughs> that at some point, several years ago, I had started this. Um, I think it's beautiful. I think um, the words from the song are nice. And I think it's really funny that you've got this traditional band sampler with the funny Valentine words. And I think it would be really fun to have that on a wall with traditional reproduction samplers. So at some point I started it and I'm using Belle Swa Tulip. And I did work on it a little bit. I thought maybe this is a red sampler. Maybe Brenda and Laura will let, let me get credit for this. So I thought, wouldn't that be nice to finish that this month and have it for Valentine's Day? But, you know, it'll be fun to work on it during the month of February, too. But I've just got to get Isabella Johnstone done. So when I was making my stitching plans for 2020, I, at least for the first three months, I, I thought I want to finish this sampler, Isabella Johnstone, in, in uh, January. I want to finish my very old prairie schooler, the, you know, Cross-Eyed Cricket, The Promise Kept, the flowers with the the bulbs, the flower bulbs underneath it in February, and A Thousand Hills by Plum Street in March. And then I thought, I also want to do an ornament each month, and I want to finish a mania piece each month. We'll see. So the mania piece, I don't know why, I just can't finish this. Um, I've got all the colors, except I can't quite decide what I want to use for his pants because I'm using the DMC conversion that was given in the chart, but I don't like the pants color. And I may have swapped, the pants color might have been that yellow right there. I don't know what happened exactly. But I hope I can finish that on Friday. That is Carriage House Samplings, Mr. and Mrs. Abbott and Daughters. The other one, and I'm sorry I don't have the magazine. I don't even have my working copy. This is um, from a Just Cross Stitch Christmas magazine. It's called Three Crowns. And I've got to finish the words Merry Christmas, finish the border on the bottom. The horizontal borders are much quicker than doing it vertically, so that shouldn't be a problem. And then there are two birds in the middle, two solid red birds and a little tree of um, eyelet stitch motifs. So we'll see, maybe I can get that one done by Friday too. And this was also a mania start. Both of these were mania starts from last year. So I will be following my own, my own rules there. All right, so that's all I've worked on. That's all I have to show you. Except I have, um, my haul. Um, so, and then I was going to show you a couple of things that I was knitting. Uh, I was going to show you a really interesting sock pattern. Let me show you that really quickly. This is right now my favorite sock ever. This is a fantastic colorway. Um, it's called Summer Camp. It's Knit Picks Felici. The uh, Knit Picks is the yarn company. You can find them online. Felici is one of their sock yarn lines. And Summer Camp is the colorway. And the pattern is called Embrace. And I don't have it with me because it's so easy to memorize. Um, by Mima Designs, maybe? I don't know. I think if you just looked up Embrace Socks. It's a four-row uh, pattern, a four-row repeat. Well, it's an eight row repeat. I don't know. It is just so much fun. Those colors, I mean, those are the colors that, that I was wearing at summer camp in the 80s. I, um, I don't know. That's, I don't know. That's really, really pretty. I don't know if that color was in the 80s. I can't remember. And then I'm doing neon pink heels. It's just an opal neon pink. But if you like sock knitting and if you like patterns and you want to really easy um, pattern that's a lot of fun embrace socks that's really good the other thing I wanted to show you um, this is the last non cross stitch thing I wanted 
<clears throat> excuse me, I wanted a really big scarf that I could loop around and stick the ends through the loop. And um, my neck, um, my neck has, I'm going to turn 47 in two months and my neck has just stopped trying. So I don't know. It's just stopped trying. But it's very, very sensitive. And the more anti-aging products I put on it, the more sensitive it gets. And so I don't like wool is just driving me crazy. So I got Knit Picks Cot Lin, a cotton linen blend. Um, I got it at their November sale. Knit Picks has a big sale in June and a big sale in November. And that's when they introduce new Felici colors. And sometimes they don't introduce the Felici colors on the first or second day even of the sale. I think in November, I placed an order and I ordered all of this Kotlin because it was on sale. And then I kept checking back and like on the fourth day of the sale, they had the new Felici. Um, so this is cotton and linen. Doesn't bother my neck. Um, and this is just a feather and fan pattern, sometimes called old shale. There's variations um, of both of them, lots of variations of both of them. They're just a very old knitting pattern. <clears throat> and this was the first ball. And so I just want a really huge scarf that I can loop around. Um, and I was hoping that this color, just sort of an almond color, you know, I'd, I'd be able to wear it with anything. Um, so I've been working on that. I've been working on that. All right, so here's the haul. This is from Christmas Money. Um, first, oh, I, I meant to say I'm wearing my Stitching with the Housewives shirt. And I have a Stitching with the Housewives bag. And... This isn't my Stitching with the Housewives mug, but it's Ray Dunn, and um, and it's got coffee sloshed all over it. Um, Priscilla and Chelsea, I think, are responsible for a lot of us. Even if we liked Ray Dunn before, we became completely gaga for it um, after Priscilla and Chelsea. So I showed you in my last video a red sampler that I really wanted to start. Um, it said remember what it said but I got it from uh, Sabine Tatera Goondaker you if you google reproduction European reproduction samplers her website should come up if you want to make sure say European reproduction samplers Sabine S-A-B-I-N-E maybe it's Sabina so I ordered a, a couple of more, a couple more. I told you about this one. This was the one that I was getting all misty eyed over um, in the war year 1918. It says pray and work. Um, that's the motto of, is that the motto of the Benedictines? Ora et labora. So pray and work. Um, in the in the war year 1918 and I really don't know if I want to do this one all in red or if I want to be authentic and do the blue I think I don't want to be authentic I think I want to do what I want to do and do it in red this one I'm thinking about starting um, this one is um, to the good mother on her birthday I think with love. My birthday's in two months and um, I try to be a good mother and neither of my girls is going to cross stitch this for me for my birthday. So I might cross stitch it for me for my birthday. The next one I'm really excited about. I just got three. I really wanted to get, there's one that's a huge map of England, of Great Britain. And it's in red, and it has a green leaf border, and then it has the counties um, of the different countries stitched in and backstitch. This is one that I've been wanting for a while. Caroline Kisling, also called 
the Dachshund Sampler. Super cute. Um, uh, someone asked me if I would make him black and white, like Hector, who's a Dachshund mix, but I think I would keep him brown, um, sort of a traditional. My sister's Dachshunds are brown. You think Dachshund and brown. It would be easier than um, converting the colors. Hector has speckles. Um, so I'm really excited about that. I almost started that the day the day that it came. Of course, that could be true for any of them. So that was Carolina Kisling, and those three were from European reproduction samples. Then I had a GGR attack because of Laura and Brenda. And this. <gasps> Mademoiselle Viola Mar Martini. That's fabulous. Fabulous, fabulous. And I got that from Stitch and Frog. I think all the um, the GGRs I've gotten were from, from Stitch and Frog. I don't know another good source for them. Um, you can tell me if you know. And then I got this one, the Red Deer. And I bought a, a needle thread keeper fob with a, not this Red Deer, but it was called the Red Deer. I bought it while I was watching um, Brenda and Laura sort of popped over and bought one because Laura was showing all of hers. I was worried there wouldn't be any left for me, so I had to go and go and get it. So I bought those from Stitch and Frog. The most recent thing that, that came, I got from Kitten Stitcher. I guess maybe I saw it on Instagram. Samplers Forever is a sampler company and a, a, a designer, and she's in Germany, and you can buy her charts from Germany. Uh, but she said her only American or North American um, source was Kitten Stitcher. And so I hopped onto Kitten Stitcher and got this. Now you can't, I mean, you can already see why, why I got it. Adam and Eve, big, fat flowers. I think that border might push me over the edge. Um, the border looks tedious, I'm not going to lie. But those big, fat flowers um if you go and look this sampler up online you can see where someone has stitched it and also just a mock-up of it on a on a cream background um and on one of the sampler groups on facebook someone it's stitched it's it's called for dmc but someone on one of the sampler groups on facebook is doing it in over dyed and she has shared her thread colors i know peach fuzz was um one of the colors in the roses but i'm really really excited about doing that i think it's going to have to be a fairly dark fabric um these grapes i guess right here i mean those are you know like a champagne color and the flowers um it looks like it's got a lot of really pale colors, <clears throat> at least the way the sampler looks now. And the way it's, um, no, it's, it's charted for a DMC 815. Looks like the, oh, um, so I'll have to look at that, but I'm really excited about that. It's Adam and Eve and those really, really big fat roses. So I got that from Kitten Stitcher. Samplers Forever has other nice looking, nice looking charts. Um, I bought this one from Kitten Stitcher with, still with Christmas money, but it was at a different time. Chris, uh, Kitten Stitcher and McKenna, Carrie, I guess I've never gotten it out of a package. Carrie um, Scarlet Letter Charts, which is exciting. Now, I really fell in love with this the very first time that I saw it. This is um, Mary and Joseph, and it looks like it's the flight to Egypt when they left, um, when Herod was killing the baby boys. And you maybe you can't tell, but it looks like Mary is holding 
a grub. Um, and that's why I didn't buy it the first time because I looked at an up close picture of it on the original and on the charted version. I mean, I don't, I don't understand. I mean, because there's a lot of really nice things in this sampler. I mean, that's a really nice element, those triangles, but she didn't, the, not the designer, not the scarlet hat, uh, letter, but the little girl that stitched it, she just didn't put a lot of effort into Jesus there because he looks like a grub. So, but overall, it's a very, very charming sampler. I really, really like um, these triangles. I won't like stitching all that one over one, but I really... I like the overall look. All right, then, and I got this from Kitten Stitcher. I don't know how she gets these sheepish designs and sheepish antiques, um, but this was one I didn't have in my collection. I think it, and I think she was selling it for six dollars, so I got that one. Then, um, I don't know if I've told you this before. I don't know if anybody's told you this before, but if they haven't, you need to know. On New Year's, New Year's Eve day, um, the Silver Needle has a sale, and if you order at between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. Central Time, you get 25% off your order. And then at 7 o'clock it goes down, and at 8 o'clock it goes down, and I don't know how, how long it continues. But that's an incredible deal. Because she's got a lot of charts. And I ordered a lot of charts. And I think two of them I didn't get. Um, Cinnamon Stars. That one's hard to get because everybody wants that one. Um, but I got some really great things. Um, this was the thing I was most excited about. Um, this is Black Cat Sampler 1861. So it was $24. Which is, you know, that's a pricey chart. For me, that's a pricey chart. But 25 percent off I mean that's a really good deal um, so I love it because it's red and green I love it because it uh, looks like it has a lot of Catholic motifs um, the IHS um, the Sacred Heart and I love it because of that black cat I mean is that not the cutest thing I still miss my black cat Merlin um, so this is Sampler's Not Forgotten. And I use, I remember seeing this years ago on 123 Stitch, and I just never ordered it because um, it's a pricey chart. Um, and it's a big, but look at the fonts. Aren't those just great fonts? The alphabets? I mean, those are just amazing fonts. And then that, that horse. Um... And then now the only, this was the only place I could find it was Silver Needle. That's just a great chart. Um, I got this because I want to do um, all of those, even though it's taking me like two years and I'm still not done with Autumn. I got Mary Clayton. So um, even hands-on designs are 25% off at that sale. I love that. It's really, really a nice sampler. It's just well balanced and the colors are just great. I love that. Um, I got this because seeing everybody stitch it, that's a really well balanced, nice sampler. I love that. Um, I got this because, you know, FOMO, everybody else has it. And it's beautiful. That's a really, really nice design. Um, I got this because I've wanted this for a really long time, and I decided to go ahead and get it. And then I got this. Um, I think what pushed me over the edge on this one is seeing Lindy Stitches not put the is for, just have turkey. And just the colors are so beautiful. And I really like the turkey motif. Um, Thanksgiving is my favorite secular holiday. Secular meaning, you know, well, it's not, I mean, Easter is my favorite religious holiday. Um, Thanksgiving is just my favorite holiday. I love the time of year. I love autumn the best. I love that it's all the food and all the family 
of Christmas was that without the craziness of the shopping and the gifts. Um, <clears throat> I think, I think that's what does it for me for Thanksgiving is it's just about food and family and gifts are great and getting gifts and receiving gifts and picking out gifts for people. That's great, but it's just a lot of stress. And so Thanksgiving is kind of like Christmas without that added bit of stress. Um, but I bought some turkey plates at Marshall's and I'd like to collect different kinds of turkey plates. And I got some Ray Dunn gobble plates. Um, I got them like two or three weeks ago on clearance at several TJ Maxx's. I was getting the gobble plates on clearance because I, I saw, um, you know, like the really fancy turkey plates and then, you know, the chunky, um, casual Ray Dunn gobble plate on top of it as a place setting, and it just blew my mind. Um, that was a bunch of waffle. Um, I got this because Brenda and Laura showed it, and it's really beautiful. I love all, the, this isn't part of the Holly Berry Farm series, but it's kind of got the same vibe, and I do love it. I do love it. Okay, we're on. We're at the end. I've got this with something else. Lori at Mischievous Stitches. I just saw her show it. Um, Brenda. Now Laura showed it uh, a couple episodes ago. That just. Um, that's just beautiful. Again, really um, nice, different alphabet fonts. If you've stitched a lot of alphabets. Um, you know that sometimes it's just great to stitch a really different alphabet. And then I've really been pulled towards sort of the Berlin wool work motifs. Um, I think you can see that with, you know, like Carolina Kisling. Those little, those little islands you know, just islands of a pastoral um, scene. I feel like that's there. I love a good wreath. Um, so that's one that I really, really want to do. Okay, the last thing I was going to show you, you've all seen this, I hope. Um, this is the Hands Across the Sea. I think I said hands-on designs a while ago when I showed Mary Clayton and I showed... I meant Hands Across the Sea, chart that for a $10 donation um, that you would receive this chart, and I'm sorry, 10 pounds. Um, it worked out to, I think, about $13 American. And the money would be sent to two fire brigades battling the Australia fires. Um, so an incredible chart, an incredible price, and an incredible cause. Um, and they've raised so much money, and I'm so, so happy um, to have the opportunity, you know, um, made so easy. You know, you think you know you should donate to these good causes, and then this was just handed to you. This opportunity to donate to a good cause was just handed to you on a platter. I mean, it was fabulous. All right. The next thing that I want to show you um, is just a stash dive. It's my, as Laura and Brenda would say, my um, immediate radar, which of course changes, you know, constantly as they as they admit. So this is not haul. This is stuff I have that I I keep in a basket next to me. It's almost more like fantasy stitching. I just look through this and I fantasize about stitching it. And I fantasize about seeing it in different places, on different walls. And one of the great things about sampler walls that I, when I, when somebody shows um, their sampler wall is, you know, you have several samplers in common. But when you, when somebody, when you see them on somebody's wall, they're in a different mix. Um, and I love to see the same sampler in a different setting, you know, surrounded by different things. It sets off different parts of the sampler. It really looks great. This is an old good huswife that I fell in love with and I hunted down. I worked so hard hunting this down. 
and then I didn't start it. It's called Wife Into Thy Garden. It's talking about strawberries. And it looks so simple. It looks like it would just stitch up in a week, doesn't it? So fantasy, fantasy stitching. I still want to do that. The next one I can't show you because I gave the cover to my mom for um, in case she wanted to use it for her journaling. But it's G Ledger by Reflex to Swa. That's not how you say it, but I'm not in France. I'm in the Appalachian Mountains. Um, I really want to start it February 1st. I want that to be my February start. This was the one that I got from Sabina last time that I showed you that I was just so hot to start. Um, God protect you. And now I'm leaning towards starting the other one. This is still on my immediate radar. This one, I just moved into the immediate radar bag. I think I've showed you, I'm sure I've showed you this before. I've had it for a long time. Um, this one surprises me that it's a reproduction. Um, it is a reproduction. There's the original. But this looks um, like a modern sampler to me for some reason. It looks, um, but I love the colors in it. Um, Janet Spears. It's an 1813. Um, there's the reproduction. Uh, there's the original. Uh... This one, Brenda and Laura showed this, and I slowly collected the silks for this. I think there's just six MPIs. I really want to start that one. And then I pulled these two out. Well, no, I don't know what that one might be. This one, Mary Margaret's going to be living in a house with a couple other girls um, in the fall. And one of the girls, um, I mean, she's known them known her since she was six or seven and they went to see the little women movie together i think they may have gone to see it multiple times um they really loved it i uh i just don't watch chick flicks anymore um i loved little women i read the book over and over and over and over again um and i read the rest of the the series uh i don't know that i've ever seen a movie unless i saw an old black and white one I don't know. But anyways, Mary Margaret loved the movie. And M Mary Margaret's friend, Mary, that she was watching it with, said, oh, tell your mom we need some cross-stitch for our new house. She said, because they had all this cross-stitch on the walls in the Little Women movie. And I said, oh, really? I said, well, you know, what kind of cross-stitch did they have? Because, you know, this would have been the 1860s, I guess. And I didn't know if it were, if it was, um, you know, like the words, the Victorian words, you know, that say home sweet home or something, or if it was samplers, I didn't know what it was. Mary Mark's like, I don't know. I didn't even notice cross stitch in the movie. Uh, she says, but you know, Mary says we need some cross stitch to make it look like little women. Um, so I kind of thought this might be fun. And also, ooh. oh, the other thing is, they said, now, Anne of Green Gables, I was really Laura Ingalls' Little House on the Prairie. I read those books till they completely fell apart. I mean, they completely fell apart. Um, my girls read, I don't know if they even finished the series. For, the, for Mary Margaret, it was all about Anne of Green Gables. And so she and these girls have decided that this is going to be their Patty's Place. Is that where Anne and some girls went to live in a house together when they were at teaching college? And so she really wants me to find an Anne of Green Gables sampler. And I, I, I just don't know of any. I mean, there's so many literary-based samplers, but I can't think of an Anne of Green Gables sampler. So if you can think of someone who's designed an Anne of Green Gables sampler, let me know. Um, because that's what Mary Margaret has requested. So, I hope you saw something that inspired you. 
or maybe you just like looking at eye candy. That's what I like to do. I love to go through somebody's stash. Um, at this point, I realize I really, I mean, I don't need any more stash. It, <laughs> I really don't need any more stash. Um, and so I just like looking. I, I'm not going to be able to do it all. Um, and so I really just like looking at charts. I like seeing your collection of charts. Um, so I hope that you saw something that you enjoyed. I hope you liked it, that this was a, you know, a much shorter video. And I hope that I'll have some more things to show you in a couple of months. Bye.